we'll be reading the second part of the homily on the salvation of mankind. Ye have heard of whom all men ought to seek their justification in righteousness, and how also this righteousness cometh unto men by Christ's death and merits. Ye heard also how that three things are required to the obtaining of our righteousness, that is, God's mercy, Christ's justice, and a true and lively faith, out of which faith springeth good works. Also, before it was declared at large that no man can be justified by his own good works, because that no man fulfilleth the law according to the full request of the law. And St. Paul, in his epistle to the Galatians, proveth the same, saying thus, If there I had been any law given which could have justified, verily righteous should have been by the law. And again he saith, If righteousness be by the law, then Christ died in vain. And again he saith, You that are justified in the law are fallen away from grace. And furthermore, he writeth to the Ephesians on this wise, By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, for it is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should glory. And to be short, the sum of all Paul's disputation is this, that if justice comes of works, then it cometh not of grace. And if it come of grace, then it cometh not of works. And to this end tendeth all the prophets, as St. Peter saith in the tenth of the Acts. Of Christ all the prophets, saith St. Peter, do witness that through his name all they that believe in him shall receive the remission of sins. And after this wisdom to be justified, only by this true and lively faith in Christ speaketh all of the old and ancient authors, both Greeks and Latins, of whom I will specially rehearse three, Hilary, Basil, and Ambrose. St. Hilary saith these words plainly in the ninth canon upon Matthew. He says, faith only justifieth. And St. Basil, a Greek author, writes thus, This is a perfect and whole rejoicing in God, when a man availeth not himself for his own righteousness, but knoweth himself to lack true justice and righteousness, and to be justified by the only faith in Christ. And Paul, saith he, doth glory in the contempt of his own righteousness, and that he looketh for the righteousness of God by faith. These be the very words of St. Basil. And St. Ambrose, a Latin author, saith these words, This is the ordinance of God, that he which believeth in Christ should be saved without works by faith only, freely receiving remission of his sins, Consider diligently these words. Without works, by faith only, freely we receive remission of our sins. What can be spoken more plainly than to say that freely, without works, by faith only, we obtain remission of our sins? These and other like sentences that we justified by faith only, freely and without works, we do read oft times in the most best and ancient writers. As besides Hilary, Basil, and St. Ambrose before rehearsed, we read and the same in origin. St. Chrysostom, St. Cyprian, St. Augustine, Prosper, Ocumenius, Photius, Bernardus, Anselm, and many other authors, Greek and Latin. Nevertheless, this sentence that we be justified by faith only is not so meant of them that the said justification by faith alone is in man's opinion, without true repentance, hope, charity, dread, and fear of God at any time or season, nor when they say that we be justified freely, they mean not that we should or might afterwards be idle 
and that nothing should be required on our parts afterwards. Neither, they meant not so much to be justified without our good works, that we should do no good works at all, like as we shall be more expressed at large hereafter. But this saying, that we can be justified by faith only freely and without works, is spoken for to take away clearly all merit of our works as being unable to deserve our justification at God's hands, and thereby most plainly to express the weakness of man and the goodness of God, the great infirmity of ourselves and the might and power of God, the imperfectness of our own works and the most abundant grace of our Savior Christ, and thereby holy for to ascribe the merit and deserving of our justification unto Christ only and his most precious blood shedding. This faith, the Holy Scriptures teacheth, this is the strong rock and foundation of Christian religion. This doctrine all old and ancient authors of Christ's church do approve. This doctrine advanceth and set us forth the true glory of Christ, and beateth down the vain glory of man. This whosoever denieth, those, who, those whosoever denieth is not to be counted for a true Christian man, nor for a setter forth of Christ's glory, but for an adversary of Christ and his gospel, and for a setter forth of man's vain glory. And although this doctrine be never so true as it is most true indeed, that we should be justified freely without all merit of our own good works, as St. Paul doth express it, and freely by this live lively and perfect faith in Christ only, as the ancient authors used to speak of it, yet this true doctrine must be also truly understood and most plainly declared, lest carnal man should take unjustly occasion thereby to live carnally after the appetite and will of the world, the flesh and the devil. And because no man should err by mistaking of this doctrine, I shall plainly and shortly so declare the right understanding of the same, that no man shall justly think that he may thereby take any occasion of carnal liberty to follow the desires of the flesh, or that thereby any kind of sin shall be committed or any ungodly living the more used. First, you shall understand that in our justification by Christ, it is not all one thing, the office of God unto man and the office of man unto God. Justification is not the office of man, but of God. For man cannot make himself righteous by his own works, neither in part nor in whole. For that were the greatest arrogancy and presumption of man that Antichrist could set up against God, to affirm that a man by his own works take away and purge his own sins, and so justify himself. But justification is the office of God only, and is not a thing which we render unto him, but which we receive of him. Not which we give to him, but which we take of him by his free mercy and by the only merits of his most dearly beloved Son, our only Redeemer, Savior, and Justifier, Jesus Christ. So that the true understanding of this doctrine we be justified freely by faith without works, or that we be justified by faith in Christ only, is not that this our own act to believe in Christ, or this our faith in Christ, which is within us, doth justify us and deserve our justification unto us, for that were to count ourselves to be justified by some act or virtue that is within ourselves. But the true understanding and meaning thereof is that although we hear God's word and believe it, although we have faith and hope, charity, repentance, dread, and fear of God within us, and do never so many good works thereunto, yet we must renounce the merit of all our said virtues of faith, hope, charity, and all of the other virtues and good deeds, which we either have done, shall do, or can do, as things can be far too weak and insufficient and unperfect to deserve remission of our sins and our justification. And therefore, we must trust 
only in God's mercy and in that sacrifice which our high priest and Savior Christ Jesus, the Son of God, once offered for us upon the cross to obtain thereby God's grace and remission, as well as our original sin in baptism, as of all actual sin committed by us after our baptism, if we truly repent and turn unfeignedly to him again. So that as St. John Baptist, although he were never so virtuous and godly a man, yet in this manner of forgiving a sin, he did put the people from him and appointed them unto Jesus Christ, saying, Thus unto them, Behold, yonder is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Even so, as great and as godly a virtue as the lively faith is, yet it putteth us from itself, and remitteth or appointeth us unto Christ. For we have only by him remission of our sins or justification. So that our faith in Christ, as it were, saith unto us thus, It is not I that take away your sins, but it is Christ only. And to him only I send you for that purpose, forsaking therein all your good virtues, words, thoughts, and works, and only putting your trust in Christ. Herein is part two of the Sermon on Salvation, Part three, the final part to be read next Wednesday. Thanks be to God.